guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. If you're new around here, please subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe button below. It costs you nothing, but it actually helps the channel, guys. Um, if you want to keep up to date with videos, click the bell notification button as well. So that just simply keeps you up to date with any videos we may upload. Um, this is Rate the Transfer Rumor Show. And basically, I'm going to rate between 1 and 10 the transfer rumour essentially I'm not going to be divulging any info and anything I might have heard of uh, or might be aware of that's happening in the background etc but I'm just going to focus on players that may have been linked to clubs that have been mentioned online on various platforms be it newspapers be it uh, you know Twitter whatever it is uh, Instagram and uh, you know, all social media platforms First up, guys, and I suppose it's Georgie Kelly from Bohemians to Derry City. Now, most people will know that uh, about this transfer rumour, etc. Uh, we all know about the money Derry City have coming into the club and some players they've signed already, like Duffy and McElhenney. And, um, you know, they've kind of gone a bit local there as well. Georgie Kelly, of course, is a Donegal man. Uh, he was in the Derry Academy as a youngster as well, and... Um, I think he's from an area in Donegal that isn't too far from Derry either, incidentally. Um, he's been brilliant this season at Bohemians, scoring a lot of goals, settled in well at the club. Um, but, you know, Derry City, I'm sure, will be appealing to him. Now, I suppose what Bohemians have in their favour is the fact that he's doing his master's degree in Dublin and he may feel that the, uh, you know, the current uh, regime suits him that he can train in the evenings, etc., etc. However, if Derry City offer him a good wage, um, he may think twice as well, and um, you know, Derry City are in a position to do so. Um, putting all those things together and considering things, I would say, I would actually give this a 5 out of 10, meaning a 50-50 chance. I still think this could happen. Um, Derry could well persuade him with their ambition, with the type of players they have coming in and kind of returning home essentially for Georgie Kelly as well might be a, a carrot <clears throat> at the end of the stick that uh, he can't afford to let go at this minute in time um, but then there's a chance he stays at Bowles because he feels like he's playing well he's he's happy there he's working well in, the, in a good team under Keith Long etc and as I said it might suit his current regime. So for that reason, I think it's a touch and go this one, and I'll go 5 out of 10. Next up, it involves Derry City again. Will Patchin from Dundalk to Derry City. Now, Will's contract ends at the end of the season at Dundalk, and it's likely that Dundalk are going to have to let a lot of these players go. Will, of course, was on loan at Derry City earlier on the season, where he was magnificent, actually. He was probably their best player in that current uh, spell as well. Um... Will is obviously very good uh, from set pieces, uh, can score goals in general as well, Penal can take penalties too. So he's a very, very good player. And I'd be surprised if Derry Sishi weren't still interested in bringing him back to the Brandywell, particularly when he was there and he did well. He's been playing well enough for Dundalk generally as well, it has to be said. I think overall he's playing better at Derry City though. But, uh, you know, we could argue that... Um, that's the same with a lot of Dundalk players generally in the last few months that maybe they haven't been quite hitting the heights they would like overall, uh, although they've improved recently. Um, this one, I think there's a very, very good chance it'll happen. I think, as I said, contract up end of the season. Um, clearly enjoyed his football at Derry City. Derry can give him a good wage. It's hard to see him go anywhere else in the League of Ireland, so... I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I'd be fairly sure this is going to happen. The only reason why I don't give it a 10 is because there's always a chance it won't happen, basically. So uh, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. Next up is Ed McGinty to Shamrock Rovers. This has been mentioned online as well in a few quarters too. But um, for me, this one's a strange one, actually, because obviously Ed is, um, you know, he's playing very well. He's one of the best young goalkeepers in the league. I've no doubt that Shamrock Rovers would be interested in taking him. However, Alan Manus, Alan Manus, I was going to say Mac Manus, Alan Manus even, has uh, one year left on his deal at Shamrock Rovers and is still a top goalkeeper. So, Ed McGinty as well, I believe, is under contract as well at Sligo. So, it would mean that Shamrock Rovers would have to pay a fee. So, it doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me that Rovers would pay a fee for Ed McGinty while Manus is there for another year. Uh, Devil's Advocate would say get McGinty in, get him settled in at the club before a 
possible departure of Manus the next year and have someone actually challenge Manus for the last year, which would be interesting. But I'm not sure if Ed would want to leave Sligo to move to Shamrock Rovers and not necessarily be guaranteed to play for for the last year you know, of Manus's deal or whatever. So I'm not really sure about this one, to be honest. Uh, I could see it happening maybe the following year, for sure, but we're talking about next season. And um, for those reasons, I would say unlikely. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It's not as if Rovers don't have the funds. I mean, they made a lot of money on Gavin Bazuna recently as well in terms of making appearances for Republic of Ireland. So it's not as if Rovers won't have the funds. But um, McGinty is still very, very young and he's in, he's in no rush to make a move anyway. So he might want to see how the last season goes at Sligo before he possibly makes a move so for that reason i'm going to give this one a three out of ten Um, there's always a chance but i think it's highly unlikely next up paul doyle from ucd to either st patrick's athletic or dundalk and um yeah this one it's a strange one for me doyle's a midfield player he plays in a midfield three usually with uh, kerrigan and keeney at ucd i would suggest kerrigan and keeney um are far better players doyle's a bit more defensive to be fair um I wouldn't necessarily say he was being one of UCD's best players this season either. And I just feel I link to the likes of St. Patrick's Athletic, who obviously um, have a very strong midfield as it is and uh, look like they're going to get Europe. So do they need to bring in Doyle? I probably don't think so. You know, the likes of Forrester, Benson, uh, Lennon, McCormick coming through, even Keen Corbally. Uh, Lewis might move on, of course, but um, I don't think Pats need him, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's a strange, strange link, to be fair. Regarding Dundalk, there might be more legs than that because we don't really know what way Dundalk will be next season. They may, may have new owners. Um, they're going to lose a lot of their players. What kind of player can they get in Um, in terms of wage and money, in terms of that? What are they allowed to bring in? So the Dundalk one probably has a bit more legs, but I still don't really see it. So um, I don't know. I think Doyle to Pats, I'd give it... I'd be very surprised, to be fair. I'd give it one out of ten. One, because there's always a chance, but it's highly, highly unlikely. Uh, Doyle to Dundalk, maybe three out of ten. I'd still be surprised if Dundalk don't go for a better calibre player next season, no matter what. Um, and I'd be surprised if he made the move. Like uh, As I said, UCD is probably still his level at the moment as well, so I'm not really sure about that either. So um, I think three out of ten to Dundalk. One out of ten, St. Patrick's Athletic, personally. Next up, we've Adam Foley, uh, Finn Harps to uh, Drogheda United. And um, I've seen this um, in a number of places as well uh, on, on the internet. I don't think I've seen this one in the newspaper. Most of them are seen online, to be fair. And uh, this, to me, this one makes sense. I think, um, you know, Foley is from Dublin. He... Um, I know he commutes up to Finn Harps, which is, uh, it's very difficult to do that for a couple of seasons, I believe. Um, if you're commuting up to Finn Harps, um, you know, regularly from, from Dublin, I'm not sure exactly where he lives, but um, if he doesn't live in Dublin, he lives in Clare or Mead or somewhere like that. So um, I could see this one possibly happen. Yeah, I think his, um, his form hasn't been as good second part of the season as it was the first part of the season. Maybe that's the reason for it as well. Just a little unsettled, perhaps. Uh, Drogheda, there's a space for him there. He can play up front. He can play on the right of an attack. And, um, you know, certainly I believe he could um, push and get into the Drogheda side on that right-hand side, actually, of the attack. And um, I just think he'd be happier maybe if he moved away from Finn Harps because of the reasons I've mentioned in terms of getting the train and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I can definitely see this one happening, I think. Um, the question is, will Drogheda stay up? So if Drogheda go down, could that happen? I still think it could happen, personally. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think they will go down, to be fair, even if they finish ninth. But that's another scale for another day, I suppose. But uh, yeah, Foley, I think, would add to Drogheda. He's a very good player, I think. He can play in a number of positions. Drogheda are flexible in attack. I think he would suit Drogheda. And as I said, it would suit Drogheda for him in terms of that on the football pitch, but also um, in terms of uh, his living arrangements. So I, I see this one happening. Um, I would give this one probably a 7 out of 10. It's highly likely, 
but um, you never know either. So 7 out of 10 Foley to draw that for me. Finally, guys, we'll end on Daniel Kelly from Dundalk to Bohemians. Has been doing the rounds again. Uh, obviously, Daniel was at Bohemians before. He was excellent. He's been excellent at Dundalk for most of his career as well. But a uh, couple of things. A um, few injury problems, I have to say, recently enough. And uh, he seems to have lost his place as well in Vinnie Perth's side, uh, which is a pity as well because he's, uh, he's one of those wingers that's very direct explosive can score goals and he's a real Keith Long type player to be honest. Keith Long likes wingers. He likes uh you know we've seen it with the likes of Grant, Twardick, like proper direct wingers like and um you know Stephen Mallon as well. I know Mallon has had serious injury problems with bowls, but he's that type of player that Long brought in. Kelly will be familiar with moving back to bowls. I definitely think he needs to get out of Dundalk now because uh I think he's probably the injuries and in that as well, but there's a staleness that's come into it as well. And I think he can be rejuvenated at another club. Uh, he's got good ability, as I said before. Eye for a goal, direct, uh, got a bit of pace, um, kind of assist, get crosses into the box, etc. So uh, this one could well happen. I think other clubs might be after him as well, but, um, you know, you'd like to think that Bowles could be in a very good position to actually bring him back to the club. I definitely see him leaving on dock. Um I would say ten out of ten he leaves on dock. Bohemians. I'm actually gonna give this one I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten, I think. I think there's a very good chance he'll go to Bohemians. I think um you know there a number of other clubs you could say to yourself he could get in at and do well, like maybe St Patrick's Athletic for example as well. I just sense though he might prefer to go back to Bohemians and um, I just sense that Bowles might be a little bit more interested than Pats are too. So for that reason, I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. Um, let me know what you think in the comments in regards to these particular transfer rumours. Even give a rating if you like as well. Um, there's a couple more as well. So I think if I see a bit more going on, I'll do another video about this, say, next week as well. So... Uh, Look, it's an interesting video to do and, um, you know, it's really ramping up, isn't it, now, the, the transfer news and stuff like that. I've heard other bits and pieces as well, but um, that I can't really say, to be honest with you, because um, it hasn't been in the media outlets, so I'm not going to bring them to the table. It won't be fair for what I've heard to the people who've told me or the clubs or the players themselves, so I'm not going to divulge that kind of stuff. Um, but let me know generally what you think about this video and the style of video as well. Um this is something you'd love to see going forward as well on a regular basis if there's enough legs, obviously, uh, in the media outlets and that. And uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. I'll see you later and thanks for watching again. Okay.